Hey, Chad, do you want to go into business with me? Hmm? Do, do you want to create a video game with me? Let's do that, Chad. Let, let's imagine that we're game developers now and we're creating a video game. We're going to use Unity as our platform because it's a very popular platform. Everyone uses it. It's easy to find developers for it. So let's use Unity as the thing that we're going to go with, right? So we're making our video game. It's probably going to be a little bit expensive, a little bit financially crippling. But hey, you know, you can make a bank loan. You can use GoFundMe or Patreon. I mean, it's 2023, so we do have some options. And uh, hopefully our game will make some money, but not too much. Because if it makes too much, Unity is just around the corner. So if you happen to make more than $200,000, well, first we got to pay Steam. I think it's like 40%. Uh, then we have to pay the publisher which may be anywhere between 10 to 30%, depending on the type of publisher that we have chosen. Uh, we also have to pay the staff, you know, the bank loan that we made for the game. Yeah, we got to pay that as well. And uh, hopefully we have some money for the sequel. Oh, wait, what's this? Unity wants to be paid based on how many people installed our game now. So there's no cap to this. Uh, we're just going to get an invoice from them, and hopefully it's correct. I mean, why would they lie, right? Why, why would they lie about their invoice? It's not like there's a conflict of interest where they get paid more based on how many people installed. I mean, surely they're going to make sure that they're not counting piracy as game installed, right? They're, they're not going to count uh, some review bombing, like a modern version of review bombing, where people are like constantly installing our game in order to review bomb us. No, 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 they're going to be quite legit. So we might get an invoice from Unity saying like, hey, you know, you got to pay $10,000 this month. Oh, $20,000 next month. So on and so forth. Right? I mean, we don't know. But but this is like what business people love the most. This, this is uh, people who are being more adventurous in 2023, going in uncharted waters, like having no idea how much costs are going to be involved. Costs that can go way over your initial production uh, estimate, right? So, like, we can put uh, $30,000 into making this game, but maybe we have to pay 60000 to Unity. I mean, again, there, there's no cap to this. It's to infinity and beyond. Now, of course, you can uh, decide to buy Unity Pro, and if you buy Unity Pro, you pay $250 per month, and now it's a uh, $1 million cap, and $1 million uh, is also uh, the uh, the number of installs that you're alive before you have to pay. But again, it's uh, the same issue, right? Like, uh, it does look a lot, $1 million, but you got to share with Steam, you got to share with your publisher, uh, you got to pay the staff, you got to decide to to hold a little bit for... Uh, for, uh, for the sequel, and all of a sudden, you, you realize that, oh, shit, they, they're also counting in Patreon money, like, this is revenue as well, it's gotta go, oh, we're selling some keychains, oh, yeah, well, this is revenue, it's, it's gotta go in, and then you have to pay Unity, right, per install. I don't know how a developer can work under these conditions, because you've no idea if a game goes viral or not, I mean, um, let's look at the game, Helltaker. Right, now, let's assume Helltaker is made in Unity. I don't think it is, but, like, let's assume for the sake of the argument. Now, this is a free-to-play game, but I'm pretty sure that the owner of Helltaker has different monetization options. Like, uh, one of them, I think, is to buy the uh, uh, the soundtrack for it, and uh, they, they probably get some revenue if you do that. Uh, I, I think, like, they are selling some keychains, and they may be selling some uh, little dolls of the, the Helltaker girls. Right, now, that's that's revenue. So, obviously, they have probably more than 200,000 installs. I wouldn't be surprised if they have even more than 1 million installs. And on top of that, if they happen to get the correct revenue from the sales of that, well, now they have to pay money for installs, right? So, where's the limit? There is no fucking limit. Uh, it depends, right? Like, how many people installed the game? Now, now, take into account that Unity counts this as well uh, as two installs. If a person, like, downloaded it, installed it, removed it, and then installed it again. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be fascinating. Um, now, how does this affect the user? Well, the user is being affected in multiple ways. Like, first of all, this uh, desensitizes entrepreneurs and independent video games into getting into the industry. Now, 
right now it's just Unity doing this, but I have no doubt that if it actually manages to work, you're going to see other uh, engines deploying this as well. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if like one year, if this actually stays and people put up with it, I wouldn't be surprised if Unreal Engine doesn't do the same and many other engines do the same. I think like Godot is the only engine that probably won't do the same, but yeah, like not everyone knows how to code in Godot. So there's that. Uh, but the second thing like this requires, I assume, people to be online only, right? How else can they know if you install the game or not so that the application can phone home and tell them? So not only the fact that it requires online only, it probably requires some sort of DRM, which I know that players absolutely love, right? Like I, I know that players, lo what, what they love the most is a DRM on their video game. Um, I don't even know if the developers that make these games are going to be able to sell them on GOG now because like GOG doesn't consider itself to be a distribution platform. It considers itself to be uh, a, a platform without DRM like selling games without DRM. So if your game has to have the DRM installed due to Unity, you can't take it off in order to sell it on GOG. So I, I'm not really sure how that's going to turn out or, or how that's going to work. I'll have to look a little bit closer to, um, to, to what they require. But like that can be another thing, right? But but the thing that, that probably annoys people the most is the online only aspect. Like I remember a couple of years ago when gamers were so livid about this. I think it was StarCraft 2, the first one that uh, had an online-only thing. And uh, there, there was an entire franchise that was absolutely crippled and destroyed by this um, SimCity, right? So SimCity came out and said that, hey, our game only works in online-only. And people were absolutely upset and livid. So they boycotted. The game was unpopular and it never made the sequel. Uh, Xbox One as well, like it had an online only feature and uh, at the time people were boycotting. But there is like such a slow burning of the frog to the point where we are reaching today that companies are flat out harvesting data and information from people and you're not getting paid anything. Like as the end user, you're not getting any money in return. You're not getting anything in exchange. Uh, your information is taken and the game developer has to pay for that. Because this is like, the, the way you should imagine this happening is like if you go to a restaurant and as you're eating the dinner, there's a waiter there that has to stay next to your table, listen in to your conversations. Uh, they get to check through your pockets, look at your ID, at your social security number. They're, they're going through your purse. They're looking at anything you have, right? They're not taking, but they're like just monitoring and, and seeing the type of things you got there. And uh, at the end, you got to pay for that waiter as well, right? Like uh, the, the fact that he actually went through your stuff, collected your data and sold it to the restaurant manager, which then is going to monetize it further. Uh, you have to pay for that. This is what I think Unity is doing, right? Like they want to, to harvest information from the users. If you play a game with Unity uh, and they're making the game developers pay for it, they, they want to forward the costs. So... There is no fucking reason that Unity should track like what, what you're installing on your computer, that it should make sure that uh, the, the game's uh, phone home and that shit. You should be able to play your game offline as well, right? You should be able to just have a game, double-click the executable, and play it like we used to do for all these decades. But no, apparently not. Apparently this, this new monetization system is most likely going to require an online-only connection. So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it is difficult for current developers to migrate. Like, like in, in some situations, it's easy to go to a new engine. Uh, in others, it's not. Uh, but I just do not see why any new developer would ever consider using Unity under these conditions and under these circumstances where there is no predictability whatsoever. And, and you can pay all the way up to 100 grand a month. Like... Why, why wouldn't you even pay one million a month? Like, again, I, I genuinely, like, do not understand um, why did they put a cap on this? And why is it revenue and not just profits? Like, how greedy are these fucks? And finally, games that uh, start giving you discounts, it's like 50% off, 75% off. Oh, goes free to play, never will happen again. Like, you're, you're not going to see a game that all of a sudden goes free to play under this system because, like, they are considered installs. I mean, if, if you make a game free-to-play, you're guaranteed, it's, if it's a mediocre to good game, you're guaranteed that you're going to get a couple of hundred thousand installs. 
So it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.